So welcome, Linda. I was really looking forward to our conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so looking forward to talking to you. I love it. Love these conversations. Right? And especially ending the Friday on this note. So I'm very thankful you connected with me. I know that we've um, known uh, known of each other and have talked in the past. And, uh, and you've been really, really rocking it with your podcast, interviewing some amazing people. So I am uh, thrilled to be talking to you. And I can't wait to share kind of your journey and what you're focused on right now with um, career and Technicolor listeners and, uh, you know, hopefully some new audiences. So welcome. Um, can you start off with maybe sharing with us what it is that you're focused on right now? Sure. So right now I'm an empowerment coach. I coach women on how to live empowered, how to create the life of their dreams, how to let go of old stories and programs and just um, step into their power. I grew up with, you know, very little um, supervision as a teenager and just, I didn't have the guidance and support that a lot of young girls have and should have. And I had a lot of challenges and some trauma and a lot of negativity. And anyway, I um, just overcame many things. I was a single mother, which I'm so blessed to have a wonderful son. And I was in real estate. I kind of fell into real estate as a career in my 20s. And um, ultimately, I am a teacher. I was a teacher when I was in second grade, I thought about, I want to be a teacher and it never happened. Um, and so I love coaching. I love teaching. Um, I love spirituality and the universal laws and all of that. So I teach a lot of that. And because I've overcome and because I've grown, healed and evolved and became an empowered woman and created this new life for myself. I'm so passionate about it. And I have the podcast empowered, which I kind of fell into that because I was considering doing a podcast course. And I was like, should I, shouldn't I, I wasn't looking to do a podcast, but then I was like, huh, it doesn't feel good to not do it. So it was like, I was on the fence about doing the podcast class. And then I'm like, well, not doing it feels worse than doing it. So I was like, what's going to change my life if I don't take an action, you know? So I took the action and it was like so good because, you know, I knew I wanted to be in that energy of those people and learn. And it just turned into this powerful platform that I can connect with all these wonderful women and a lot of coaches, authors, healers, um, health and wellness, because I overcame a, a debilitating illness. And because of that, I'm also super into health and wellness and how I live my life is, you know, focused on that. But um, yeah, so that is my main focus is empowering women. I also being a single parent, I support single other single parents with that because that's a big challenge you know and thank god my son turned out wonderful because we didn't get along his father and i mm -hmm. but um you know today we get along better than we ever have but it was a challenge you know um kids are amazing i love them so much but you know we're all flawed you know we all have stuff to heal from i i just you know saw your quick i'm I'm going to listen to your Rachel Madorsky interview. I actually interviewed her as well on my show. And um, I saw that little clip you did. And the reality is, I think we always, always have stuff to heal, but mm -hmm. to become a better version, you know, to be a happier, you know, um, person. But yeah, when you are better, you do better, you have, you attract better, all the things. So it's all right now about, sounds like about empowerment. Your podcast is called Empowered and yeah. you coach. Yes. Empowerment. I coach and I help women. And the thing is, um, 
the podcast, the original name that I wanted to use was Surrender to Your Best Life. Mm -hmm. Something around surrender. Because when I was back in Michigan in 2021, I went to a Gina DeVee event. Do you know who Gina DeVee is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, she wrote, she wrote a book. Yeah, she wrote a book. Right. Yeah, she wrote a book called The Audacity to Be Queen which I think every woman on the planet should read. Um, anyway, and I was at her event in Miami. It's a whole long story, but I got this, you know, divine download the final night there. I was washing my hands in the Italian restaurant. I mean, this is a famous, famous story that everybody hears that, that interviews me or hear, listens to my show. But, and basically I was like, got a message from the divine. Like I belong here. I belong in Florida. And I came back to the table and I told these two ladies and they're like, oh, you're moving to Florida. And I was like, I don't know. How is that going to work? You know, your mind's like fear and all this stuff showed up. Because and you then were I came living back. in a different state and you were yeah. there for an event in Florida. That's yeah. when you had the download. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was living in Michigan my entire life. Okay. 50 plus years. And my son was graduating college that month. We got him through college and I was struggling in my business, my real estate business. I, you know, the market up there is different. And I was, you know, for many, many years, Baiba, I've been listening to Tony Robbins, Brian Tracy, 30 years I've been feeding, trying to feed positivity and inspiration because I was in the sales position where, you know, you're dealing with people and you can't be negative, you know, or have low self-worth and self esteem. I mean, it's not, you're not going to, you know what I mean? So I was always trying, I knew that I had to work on this, but what I wasn't doing and didn't do was the somatic work, which I'm really getting into right now, like the EFT tapping and the breath work and the meditation, you know, I, I wasn't doing the meditation back then, but I've been doing the meditation for a few years now, but you're into meditation right on and off like I'm not doing it consistently but yeah on and off but keep yeah. going so yeah so um where were we I don't remember now so um you just that... in Michigan and you went to this event in Florida yes. and so you got this message that you need to move yes so I came back and um two weeks later my son was graduating graduating college and he says I'm moving to Kentucky and I was like oh he's moving away like why am I staying here I didn't have any family I had a my mother and I d don't have a relationship unfortunately and um, that's a whole story that I've dealt with and I'm dealing with but the reality is um, rejection is protection rejection is redirection and that's what I believe to be true so Gabby Bernstein's one of my favorite mentors and spiritual leaders and Gabby you know always says rejections redirection or rejections protection okay so the fact that my mother was how she was and the fact that my business was wasn't good. Like if my business was thriving, I never would have moved. I never would have went to the the event. I started hiring coaches by but in 2017 okay. to help me in my business. And the first coach, I will never forget this. She said we were all on a group phone call, not like Zoom. It was a phone call. We're all on the call and somebody was talking and she was taking up time. And she says, Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm taking up so much time. She says, never apologize again. The coach said this and it like sunk in because I was like, whoa, she's saying, don't apologize for taking up space or time or, you know, and it was so empowering. Right. And so every coach that I hired mm -hmm. was spiritual, was into the law of attraction, was into the universal laws. I didn't you know, I didn't really know that much, but that's when I started learning about manifesting and creating this life and all these things. And back when I was in, at the Gina DeVee event, all these people were coaches in the room. I was a realtor, but I was like, she's a coach. She's a coach. And at the time I was helping all my friends, like I was helping people for free. And I wasn't getting paid. And I'm like, I love this stuff. I love self-development. I love this stuff. Why am I not a coach? So I ended up hiring a coach that like at the event to help me build my coaching business. Mm -hmm. And 
So yeah, and her name's Dr. Michelle Barr. She's actually famous. She's been on my show twice. She's on Fox 2 News now every uh, week. Um, she's a manifesting queen. She's written two books and her third book's coming out now. But I mean, I could text her right now on the phone. That's the cool thing. So um, anyway, it's just, it's wild. The whole journey is incredible. Um, but I will tell you this, we can create the life of our dreams. We can do it. You just have to believe and you have to do, take the spiritual and universal laws. Like it's, it, it, everything works. Like it just, it does, but. So tell us, let's say, okay, so you're, you know, all the signs are point you, you've lived in Michigan for decades and kind of things are aligning and really supported me to go to Florida. So first of all, my book, I have several questions, but like one of them is, so tell us how has your life changed? Absolutely. So, well, number one, I'm, I sold my house of 25 years and moved across the country and now I'm a renter, right? Which I'm not ashamed. I, a little, you know, there's always these programs around renting and ownership and whatever, but that's all BS because somebody can be sitting in their million dollar house feeling lack and scarcity about their money. And I can be here in my apartment feeling abundant and tomorrow's not promise. So I don't like get into that whole thing, but I was, what's changed in my life is so much. When I sold my home and moved here, it was very scary for many reasons. I grew up in a fear-based home. Very Everything was afraid. My dad never flew on a plane. He stopped driving when he stopped working. Nobody drove in the house. You know, nobody traveled. I mean, I was the only one that traveled. It, it was, it was, you know, so for me, it was a big deal. I was leaving a state that I lived my entire life. It was me and the dog coming here by myself, you know? So, um, I kept thinking, oh my God, it's I'm going to be rent. Is it safe? You know, like, so anyway, um, but what changed is <clears throat> I love Florida. I love where I live. I live in a beautiful area. Um, I started growing leaps and bounds, having huge growth spurts as far as, you know, healing and growing and evolving and epiphanies and becoming a better version of myself and creating this new life. And I'm like, it's just, I'm happier. My soul thanked me. My soul was like, so happy because right away, Viva, I didn't just list the house. I thought about it and I was listening to one of my spiritual books, Sonia Cachette. Mm -hmm. And she said, you accept the ebb with the flow. And I was listening to this. I was walking my dog and I like her. And I came back to my home, cleaned every room, took every picture, posted mm -hmm. my house for sale, closed on 222 yeah. 22. But I was looking at local apartments because I said, well, it's easier to just stay here. And I went and looked and I said, fuck no, excuse my language. I'm not walking the dog in the cold. I'm over it. I'm done with the cold. So I'm like, I'm going to Florida. And I had, my son was saying Florida. He's like, mom, I'm not a fan of the Metro Detroit area. <laughs> Even though he grew up, we all grew up there. He's like, so my, my coach at the time said Florida. My son told me Florida and my one girlfriend said, go to Florida. So anyway, um, and then, yeah, it was really um, a beautiful thing that the, the universe uh, supported me and everything lined up for me to move to Florida. And then after I arrived here and all the things fell in place, four months later, my son came also to Florida. He lives about 45 minutes or an hour north of me. He just moved again. So he's an hour north of me. So, um, yeah. Yeah it all worked out and yeah it's amazing well, i'm really happy for you and Thank so you said that you were so second grade you thought you had that thought that you want to be a teacher a model and a teacher yes <laughs> model and a teacher okay and then did it ever like when you got into real estate were you you said you kind of fell into it were you going yeah. back and forth between no, no. What happened was I basically raised myself as a teenager and I got in a lot of trouble 
and um, was in jail and on drugs. And um, my whole journey was, I have a lot of trauma from being scarred with a lot of things that happened to me. I don't really talk about it, but it's a lot. So um, I was had horrible boyfriends that were on drugs and I was on drugs and I, you know, did things to, you know, to get the money for the drugs. And I didn't know I was an idiot. <laughs> like I had no parenting, no supervision. I mean, the car had to be home when I was 16, the car had to be home, but mm -hmm. I could leave. And mm -hmm. my friend would drop me, we drop the car up and I'd go, what is a 16 year old girl after midnight? Like it's terrible, you know? So I ended up, um, getting my GED. I was smart in school. Like I had no problems in school. Um, but I was not, I wasn't nourished properly. I wasn't guided properly as a teenager. I had, we moved when I was like 12. I had no friends. I got in with the burnouts because I just wanted to belong. That's what people do. We lived in a wealthy area. We moved in with my grandmother. It's a whole story, but and we didn't have the clothes. And I started learning that I wasn't worthy from a very young age, you know, that I wasn't enough that, you know, no, we, those are too expensive, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So I had to purchase my own, you know, babysit, make money to buy clothes and things like that. And so the point is I got in with the wrong crowd and like you, you are who you associate with. You know, I interviewed Kelly Siegel on my show and he's like, you hang out with five losers, you'll be the sixth. You hang out with five winners, you'll be the sixth. So I was hanging out with losers and I had no self-esteem and my dad was always at work and he was not a strong father figure. And I ended up fucked up in a bad way. And so I was in jail and I had a felony and, and I got out of there and I, you know, but for nine months, I thought I was going to have I was in school. I was working. I was waiting for my sentence. And I ended up the the lawyer who took five thousand dollars from my parents back in 1980. What was it? Eighty five. Wow. Six promised that we would have probation. And he handed me a sentence when I got there and said he did a plea deal. And it said, turn yourself, you have the weekend to turn yourself in six months in jail in the county with, 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 uh, yeah, nothing's what it looks like by nothing. So it was traumatic because I had a shit, I had a difficult judge and I basically, um, was made an example of. And so, yeah, it's a lot. Um, Yeah. So anyway, that was a long time ago. We we're talking a long, long, long time ago, but it was trauma. Of course. I'm so sorry. How do you even recover from that? Come out of it. Like when right? you're so young. Yeah. But I never really processed any of it. I never had a therapist ever in my life till my 55th birthday mm. while I was here from Florida. But yeah, it's it's wild. I never tell this story, really. It just happened to come up because you're like, oh, you wanted to be a teacher when you were in second grade. How come you're not a teacher? But what happened is I kind of, I became a pharmacy technician. My dad was a pharmacist. My grandma, my mom said we're pharmacist. I became a technician. And then, but every time I apply to anything, my real estate license, my pharmacy tech, the state license, the when I got my broker's license, when I changed offices, they always asked about your felony, felony, felony. So it haunted me for years. And then when I was moving to Florida, so I carried shame for years. Of course. And, oh. and then when I moved to Florida, I'm like, I am going to hire an attorney and get this expunged because I wanted to get my life insurance license. I mean, I've already grown leaps and bounds since two years ago when I moved here, but I was like, I don't want to deal with this. I, I did get my Florida license, uh, real estate license. And I do a little bit of real estate here because it just makes sense. I'm building a coaching business. So I'm going to do real estate too. And it's a different energy and I'm much happier. And anyway, the 
point is, um, what were we saying? Um, we were talking like, about like how, you know, something like that obviously oh, comes up if you apply any job, any license. Oh, yeah, it haunted me. Yeah, for years. So you tried out like you kind of, you were a pharmacy tech and then how yeah. did you getting into the real estate, which I oh. Oh you. yeah, because my um uh, my mother was like a part. She was one of those like, um, she had you know she just did it as like a hobby. When I was like fourteen, she got a real estate license. Um, she was a stay at home mom for years and years, and so she got a real estate license. And somehow I just went into it. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. <laughs> I mean, what I was actually going to be doing as a realtor when you know in nineteen ninety two, when I got licensed. But um, yeah, so, and then my boyfriend, who is my son's father, he encouraged me to get my broker's license because I was so young and I would show up to the, you know, I would talk on the phone and get a, an appointment and I'd show up to the door and they would be like, you're the realtor. That was one of the reasons that I got my broker's license because I was like, this is back in Michigan. I was like, I want that respect, you know, I want people to, you know, so anyway, but yeah. And, um, you know, real estate was good to me. It really, really was. I just had a very negative program my whole life. I grew up in a house where there was a lot of criticism and judgment and negativity and lack of, you know, positivity and just like fear. And I mean, there was good too. I'm not being, you know, I had food, I had shelter. I mean, so many people have, you know, worse alcoholism and you know horrible abuse I didn't have that okay but what I didn't have is proper care mm -hmm. you know as a teenage girl I wasn't doing what other teenage girls should be doing you know what I mean and so this is partly why I feel called to help people because we are not our pasts our, our we are not the past mm -hmm. we are not our bodies we are not our minds we are not our thoughts you know what i mean so the fact that we're energetic spiritual beings that's why i love tracy lit i'm in love with her and her teachings as well as gabby um this is like this is just we are all worthy just for being alive we don't have to prove anything to anyone you know and for my whole life i basically was trying to prove something mm -hmm you know, my worth. So what was a, when did it hit you? When did you have that light bulb moment that that's kind of to look in deeper and to start kind of where you started having these ahas and the healing? Oh, for you. Oh, when I was sick in 11 and 12, I had a, I had a debilitating illness. I was misdiagnosed three times. Mm -hmm. I was a single mom. My son was like 12 ish. Um, no one believed me, you know, it's invisible mm -hmm. when you're not well, right? Like, like the three doctors told me I had fibromyalgia. Um, anyways, it's, it's a whole story, but I knew intuitively, see, I have a very strong intuition and I knew it's not that. And had I listened to the doctors, Fiba, who knows what, where I would be today okay. on medications and debt or whatever. But so anyway. I took myself to a rheumatologist, brought my supplements. It's a whole story. He said I had fibromyalgia. I said, you know, um, I look back and this is why I brought it up because you asked me about the awakenings and spiritual and epiphanies and all that. And it's like, I realized looking back when I started doing all this work that that was the beginning of my spiritual journey because I was so physically ill and I became so aware of what wealth really is and health is wealth because if you don't have your health yeah your money means nothing yeah. and so i um you know so basically the worthiness really the kathy heller community is where i got the deep you know message that we are worthy just for being alive like that recent is when i realized worthiness is not anything earned you mm -hmm. know 
Um, and love can be so conditional in our upbringing and such. But um, yeah, the health condition was was really bad. Um, I fought it in every possible way. I was on herbs. I was on pharmaceuticals. I lit, started lighting Shabbat candles every Friday night. To this day, I still light them. I was born Jewish. My dad chose to be an atheist. My mother's side was from Russia. And she was like, we had a Christmas tree and said, you know, it's more fun. And I don't think she really knew anything about the holidays. So I um, started lighting Shabbat candles. I started a gratitude practice that I still do today. And even on, I mean, I've been writing gratitude since 2011 and 12 and it works. It's, it works. So yeah, but yeah, I was misdiagnosed. He tried telling me again, I had fibromyalgia, this doctor. And I said, you're going to tell me from a physical exam. He goes, I'll drop blood. I said, please do. Like, I didn't come wait to come here to not have you drop blood. So he drew blood. It showed Lyme disease. And he's like, oh, that's rare in Michigan. Let me do this Western blood additional test. So I believed him. Oh, it's rare in Michigan. My friend tells me, look into that. Look into that. I looked into it. All the puzzle pieces fell in place. I joined the groups on Facebook. I was, you know, reading books. These people in the groups, they've been to every doctor. They've read every book. They knew more than everybody. I learned all the things. Mm -hmm. The long story. Oh, the first doctor I called, this was in November of 12 and he's like i couldn't get in until april another doctor wanted a thousand dollars for the first visit it was a freaking nightmare um it took me down financially it took me down it was it was crazy but he did not want to give me the the medication doxycycline that i needed he wanted me to go to an infectious disease doctor which they told me do not go to infectious disease go to a lyme literate medical doctor it's a whole thing but I, I did it. And then four years later, so I also quit alcohol too. I did everything in my power to fight this spiritual, medicinal, herbal. Um, and then in 2016, the fall, I was at a workshop and I was in there and he's like, I started crying and he goes, you identify yourself with Lyme disease? And I had I was better. It was four years later. I was, I was a lot better and like a light bulb moment. Okay. I go back to my MD. I want you to drop blood. And she, I went back to my MD alternative doctor. She drew blood and it said it didn't show Lyme. So I was like, I'm done identifying myself as a sick person. I'm done. And I ended up meeting a man in 2017 he wasn't the one because you know I was not even I was still an insecure person and I attract you attract who you are and we had some fun for a while but it turned into toxic and then um yeah so it, it it's just been a, an incredible journey for me um so how do you so now you've been in real estate for decades and it sounds like you start kind of in the last several years, you know, I understand before, like so many people I can relate years and years ago, listening to Tony Robbins, you know, and his motivation. And then you quote a lot of like different people, right? It sounds like you're taking in a lot of like different people's teachings. What, um, why coaching and kind of like what, yeah, how, how did you get to the answer that, coaching like coaching is your purpose okay okay and you're right I, I do quote people because when I like what I hear and I want that belief I I accept that belief like I can quote like a lot of things that come out of Kathy Heller's mouth I've heard from other people before you know what I mean mm -hmm. um and you know and and like Tony Robbins was the first in my opinion to say the opposite of depression is purpose Okay. The opposite of depression is purpose. But you asked, okay, why coaching? So when I was How in Miami, puzzle pieces together after years and years of career in real estate. The and because, well, I've been an entrepreneur. So when my son was young, I left real estate temporarily because it was a struggle at times. I was leaving my baby to go sit in an office. I, it was just in be 
it wasn't good. I started a professional pet sitting business. I had that for eight or nine years. Okay. Yeah. And then I returned to Juneville. I'm a big animal advocate. I have had dogs for 30 plus years and my current dog is a rescue and he's incredible. Um, I've never had a dog like this post-trauma, like he, the poor thing. Like I actually were probably just soulmates. And um, anyway, yeah, I see you post pictures on these Instagram. Very, very sweet. Yeah. He's my angel baby. Cause I wasn't going to get another one. My, my last one passed away. He's my foster fowl, foster dog that turned into my dog. Um, but anyway, back to, you ask why coaching. So to me, um, because I was, when I was in Miami and all these coaches were there and they were all happy and making money and I was doing the same thing and not making money, meaning I was helping so many friends. I've been feeding myself positivity, inspiration, reading the books, self-development, hiring coaches for so many years. Why am I not coaching? Because I didn't like the real estate. I was like, I don't want to, you know, I'm in my 50s. You burned out or was it like- yeah, oh, burned not- out. Yeah, burned out for sure. And the competition and I couldn't stand, like I would open Instagram and it's like, here's another listing this person had. And, you know, I had a victim mindset. I was raised in a victim mindset home. Oh my goodness. Look what card is sitting here. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the victim. I'm the lighthouse. Yes. It's a Gabby Bernstein Miracles Now card. Um, so that's what I used as my tools. These, these cards, I have decks and decks and decks of these cards and, and books. And I pray and I journal and I meditate and I, now I'm into the EFT tapping and I'm into, you know, all these other ways to heal. And it's so powerful because, um, you know, I grew up in a house where don't cry. Here's an ice cream. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't feel our feelings. We didn't, you know, and that's how we heal. And I think most people, I mean, I don't know the percentage, but like most people don't really grow up in super emotionally mature or attuned, you know, houses that's more I mean I don't really know my friends or you know from my circle necessarily Um, like I can't think of anybody who grew up in this right nurturing emotionally mature emotionally I think everybody comes from their own messed upness you know from the dysfunction that was happening you know in one way or another but one thing is to it's kind of like okay one thing is to do your own work, like whether it's spiritual health, healing, right? And gardening, cooking, right? Interest in vitamins. But that's like the next level that you decide that's going to be my job, right? That's going to be my purpose and mission in life. Kind of how did you know? That that's- because I'm naturally good at teaching and this is my passion work. Mm-hmm. I enjoy mm-hmm lifting other people up like I am a natural I'm a natural teacher I know I'm a teacher I can explain like I'm I've been um it's kind of like what are you good at what do you love to do what does the world need the the you know the uh what's it called the um I the yeah like whatever you know I don't know icky guy or icky guy it's the icky guy yeah it it's all of those things so I that's why I mean um so was it so, like an aha moment for you at that coaching event for Gina like that you're going to be if that's a teaching that you're going to uh, be kind doing? of and I just I want to I wanted to sh- I, I think it was a brilliant move on my part I think that this journey this entrepreneur journey is not it's it's literally how you grow it's how you become a better being um and you know it's a leadership role so it's, it's just, it's very powerful. And, you know, I, yes, it was pretty much at that Gina event that I decided I can do this. I can do this and I want to do this. And I'm actually in the process of writing a book. It's the beginning stages. It's an inspiring memoir. Mm -hmm. I took a book writing course and I'm a lifelong, um, I'm a lifelong learner, but I'm, I have lifetime access. So, I've been busy, you know, I had to, um, finish 45 hours second. Um, when you're here in Florida, you, your second year of real estate, you have to do continuing education. I mean, it's just a lot. And then 
Yeah, I'm really uh, amazed. Like when I talk to you, like you're doing so much and you have so much energy. <laughs> it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, I work well. I I protect my energy. I'm a master at energy protection. That's good. That's wonderful. And so, okay, so you are now doing empowerment coaching. So we can maybe switch gears. So let's say somebody is in a similar position, right? Where they've had career, maybe several decades, maybe, you know, several years, right? But they kind of, they're good at it, but they feel that something's missing, that either that's draining them for whatever reason, it's not really, they, they are longing for something more. So what would you and especially given the empowerment coaching you do what would you give as most powerful tools um that somebody or steps they can take to gain clarity to gain answers on what could be that next step in their work in their you know professional career purpose to find more aligned work I would say um, the sky's the limit and to create a dream proposal, like what exactly, what is the, what life do you want? Like design your life, like choose it, like the sky's the limit. Like, what do you want to be doing with your time, with your days? What, you know what I mean? And we can do it. There's so many women making so much money and doing, you know, having time freedom my goal and dream, which I'm living, but, you know, is to be, t have time and money freedom and be able to live anywhere and do my passion and purpose work and impact a lot of people. Like there's coaches that, you know, they've written books, but they, they show up once a week and they're making, you know, so much. So like, yeah, that's my desire, but I would just ask them to write down, start journaling what feels good like what kind of what do they want to be doing you know what do you want to be doing with your time what are you good at the icky guy works too you know that's helpful I would encourage them and, and tell them that they are capable of creating a life they love and especially the second half like we're not here you know this is this isn't um a dress rehearsal you know we're the we're the the main character in our play and we get to have you know create the life we desire so okay so somebody kind of like okay on the bigger scheme of things you know can create like start journaling writing out that vision right i want to work 10 to 2 you know i want to make this much money i want to have breakfast with my family right or i want to chef a gardener or you know whatever or i want to make x amount of dollars but then what's next, right? How can they actually bridge the gap? Because I mean, there are thousands and thousands of options, right? How can they actually start in a practical way, right? If they feel unclear, like, okay, they know the bigger picture, but how, how do they zero in on something on a practical level? Um practical so you're saying like like logical masculine practical like what would they oh, i mean we know? live in this world right where yeah. um you know it's great yeah, I'm, not a, I'm not a career coach i am a women empowerment coach but i'm not a career coach so maybe that's what i would recommend to them mm -hmm. but honestly um, um i just would encourage them to get clear on what they want and it shouldn't be that difficult to figure out what they want and then they can you know design something backwards but like what are you good at what do you want to do what do you love to do what does the world need um you know there's people making money like gardening you know posting videos and then teaching people how to garden i mean there's multiple Wait, ways there's to so many options where and that's sometimes yeah. it's like you even see it with I mean, most people are unclear. I mean, more than half of people, if you look at the statistics, apparently it's not easy for people because, you know, and I, I, that's why maybe maybe there are some empowerment tools that you can share that can help yeah. on this journey. I, 
I think a lot of it's worthiness, Abaiba. I feel like there there's just this limited, like we we're taught limit to be limited. And I think that that's what holds people back from knowing what they want because they have these, like, they don't feel worthy or they, you know, perhaps they're just um, unhappy with other parts of their life. I mean, it's just, it's one step at a time, you know, just self-care is gigantic. Um, self-love is gigantic in the healing and the, in the creating your best life. Like if you don't love yourself, you are not going to be living your best life. I mean, if you can't say no to people, you're not living your best life. If you don't have boundaries, I mean, these are just, these are basic empowerment things. You know what I mean? Like if you don't know how to protect your energy and prioritize yourself and, you know, that's what I do. I provide permission to do all those things. Like this is how you live your best life. Like you have to learn how to say no. You have to learn how to, you know, um, have fun like when is the last time you you know took yourself I don't know to the movies or had a you know bath with candles and flowers and you know like treat yourself how you want to be you know give yourself the love that you're seeking you know um I do that mm -hmm. you know I saw my son the other day I'm, I'm a little emotional today because we went back to you know all these which is fine. It's okay. I'm happy to feel things. Um, I mean, I don't know if I'm happy to feel things, but I'm feeling things. I'm, I'm, that's not exactly the correct word, but, um, I saw my son the other day for lunch and he's like, mom, you're a mate. Like, you're so good right now. Like you're, you're just doing so like you're, you're clear and you're confident and you're this and you're that. Like, I'm just like, because I'm living in the present Mm -hmm. because I'm doing my passion and purpose work because I'm powerful because I'm stepping into who I am. And I don't, I don't allow external things to affect how I feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's just, it's practice. It takes, it all takes practice, but it's, it goes back to the spiritual laws, like the Deepak Chopra, the Gabby Bernstein teachings. So let's say um, worthiness, right? Um, you said that, you know, feeling a lot of my coaching. can help. Yeah. That's, you said that I think you have an upcoming program, right, about it. So how can somebody, okay, if they want that, or maybe that is part of the um, quote unquote problem or issue or something that can move the needle um what what helped you to internalize feeling worthy mm, that's a great question um healing my inner child um doing a lot of inner child healing work you know I've invested over fifty thousand dollars on myself in coaching and programs and webinar you know seminars and books and, you know, retreats and, you know, I have, I read, I, you know, so I, um, inner child healing, um, again, you know, we are all worthy beings just for being alive. You don't have to achieve anything or, you know, cause I was one of those people, the doer that has to prove my worth, prove my value, the super mom, mm -hmm. you know, my son had a party and I had, to, it had to be immaculate, it had to be perfect. You know, that's exhausting mm -hmm. living this way. Um, you know, we, we had a nice house, but like a lot of his friends were in much bigger, whatever houses. And I always felt a certain way, like, but which is ridiculous. We weren't even in an apartment. We weren't in a trailer. We had a house. But anyway, you know, the judgment is so insane. But um, we self-judge. We judge ourselves. So you asked, I guess, the inner heal, the, the ch inner child work um, that I've done with coaches as well as um, 
the spiritual stuff that I've studied, you know, around worthiness and just practicing in the mirror, you know, the Louise Hay stuff, um, self-love, so gigantic. We are lovable. We are, you know, and it's, it's just, it's a key. It's a big, you know, you had Rachel on, it's the key to the castle. You heard the story, right? When she was at the I don't I would like I would not assume that anybody knows exactly like I would all, you can set the context I'm not sure which story you're referring to okay um so I'm referring to Rachel Madorsky who you interviewed recently I didn't hear the episode but she was on my show she wrote a book how to love yourself in a week or less or seven days or less yep. for the rest of life and when she was on my show, I interviewed her and she said that she was at a workshop. She was in her 20s and she was miserable and depressed. And this woman whispered in her ear and said, if you would just love yourself, she said something close to this. It was everything would be better or everything would get better if you would just love yourself. And she heard those words and she was like, I, I didn't know what she, she goes, I wasn't sure what she was saying, but I also thought it could be the key to the castle. Mm -hmm. Something told her that was probably the key to the castle. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so that's what I'm trying to tell you right now is that it is the key to the castle. It's one of the keys to the castle. You have to love yourself mm -hmm. and know that you're worthy. So I guess, I guess that's when, because when you were talking about earlier about the self judgment, in you know quite sometimes very strong or harsh or critical or very demanding things that we can tell ourselves or that voice runs can run on oh, yeah the inner critic yeah the that inner meaning form. so so much time I would say I don't even like I'm not even aware of it but like it's kind of like the glimpses when you catch yourself and I guess that work is partly the answer because I was thinking okay so if somebody realizes that they have this judgmental voice inside kind of constantly battering right like beating you down um then what's what's the answer to actually internalize to start um changing it and I guess you just said that self-love and the kind of starting to internalize that you are lovable okay let me stop you right there here's what, here's what I did that happened to me that used to be very common in my mind it doesn't work that way anymore but you have to integrate that that's your inner child and you can send love there and when those thoughts come in, that's when you send love. I'm telling you, it works. I was having a minute, you know, this is months and months and months ago, this inner mean girl, and she was, it was so mean. And I just sent love and it was gone within seconds. Mm -hmm. um, I study A Course in Miracles. I teach or host A Course in Miracles study group too. And that is also what's constantly referenced by Gabby and a lot of the coaches and spiritual leaders. Are you familiar with the Course in Miracles? I've heard of it. I have the book, but I'm not an oh. expert. You know, okay. Mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it talks about the ego and the fear versus the love and the abundant, you know, the lack, fear, ego, and then the higher self, love, abundant. You know, it's just it's a it's a shift in perception. So when you're hearing that. It's really just sending love. It's it's just fear. It's ego. It's fear. It's your inner child, and you just send love. So yeah, that's the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when you say send love, so how did you send love? Like when you catch yourself, um, then you would kind of connect with your heart and feel into it, or mentally, like think about like a. Mentally, I was mental. I was just like sending love. I don't, I, I can't explain it. And it just dissipated within seconds. It was so incredible. 
-hmm. but yeah, we all have that inner critic and, uh, that's a program. So when I say that, I mean, subconscious programs and they're there, you know, these are things you picked up from in your, in the zero to seven. And, you know, you took on these beliefs and all this negativity from your caregivers and uh, the energies around you. And it's not fact, it's not truth, but you didn't know as a little three or four year old, you didn't know that mommy being busy doesn't mean anything. Like you thought it means I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, can run really deep. So, um, how can, um, so maybe you can tell us about your course. I think that's upcoming and how can people find you, follow you and connect with you? Sure. Um, I have a six week mastermind coming up in June. I don't know when your show will come out, but, or when this show will come out, um, it's called worthy and empowered. And that's what I teach. It's a six week, um, mastermind. You can find me at Linda Brand Coach and lindabrandcoaching.com. You can find me on Instagram at Linda Brand Coach. Um, my podcast is Empowered the Podcast. It's on all platforms. And there's some solo episodes, a lot of interviews, but mostly, um, yeah, I'm, and a lot of coaches, healers, authors, a lot of women empowerment, a little bit of health and wellness. And yeah, you can find me on all start. The course is June, I think June 18th. Okay, okay. So soon, it's upcoming within a week. Yes, and then I have another one that like I'm, that's pre-recorded from my last workshop Um, that's in, available for $97 and you can watch that. Um, It's five modules, five recordings, all on worthiness and, and manifesting. Wonderful. And is there any kind of like um, maybe an empowered message that you want to leave us with? Sure. Um, you are powerful and you can, you are a creator and you can have, be, do and have anything you desire. It's just focusing. It's just knowing what you want, deciding, and then taking inspired aligned actions and all the things we talked about, the self-love and the worthiness, but we are creators and we are only here for temporary. So let's enjoy the ride and know that you are powerful. And so, yes, that's what I want to say. We're energetic, spiritual beings having a human experience and we are powerful and we can create and and everything's temporary, guys. So whatever circumstance you're in right now that might not be your favorite or may not be your preferred, tomorrow is a new day. Anything can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's yeah. It's a great perspective to come back to. And thank you for leaving us with that, Linda. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thank you for being here and thank you for your time.